Um, last evening in your keynote address, Your Eminence, uh, you spoke of the unity of truth, goodness, and beauty in God and also in His creation, and said that the beauty of art and sacred liturgy also leads us to the true and the good. Uh, but you noted the ugliness and barrenness of much art and liturgy today, and I was struck by this point. You said, quote, precisely because we have lost beauty, we have lost goodness and truth. Uh, now, truth, of course, is the, both the foundation and the objective of higher education. Ex corde ecclesiae states, it is the honor and responsibility of a Catholic university to consecrate itself without reserve to the cause of truth. This is its way of serving at one and the same time both the dignity of man and the good of the church, which has an intimate conviction that truth is its real ally and that knowledge and reason are sure ministers to faith. We live in an age, of course, when truth is denied and rejected, and even the possibility of truth is sometimes doubted, especially in many of our universities. This only serves to emphasize the great importance and uniqueness of faithful Catholic higher education, whereas Ex Corde Ecclesiae describes it, the Catholic College and University's privileged task is to unite existentially by intellectual effort two orders of reality that are too frequently uh, tend to be placed in opposition as though they were antithetical. The search for truth and the certainty of already knowing the fount of truth. If we find the fullness of our faith in the sacred liturgy, uh, here's my question, and if beauty is united in its essence to truth and goodness, then my question to the panel is this, is sacred liturgy celebrated properly and beautifully essential to Catholic higher education? Your eminence, would you like to begin? Certainly, and I, in the history of Catholic education, that's always been the case. And I remember hearing from an elderly man when I was a young priest who attended the University of Notre Dame in the uh, in the 1930s how the, the center of their life was daily mass and the young men, for instance, were trained to serve the mass and and assist the priest in various ways. And, and, and then there's the whole devotional life as well. And of course, there you, you have a very particular devotion to Our, Our Lady in the grotto and so forth. So I, but simply to return to the point, uh, if in Catholic education, the, the ultimate goal is to, to know Christ, uh, the truth, as deeply and profoundly as possible, uh, then it uh, can't be otherwise then uh, there will be the desire to encounter Christ uh, in that fullest way in which he comes to us uh, in the sacred liturgy so uh, uh, and that has always been a concern of mine about Catholic higher education in these recent years is that the, the liturgy was the, the attention of the liturgy didn't always seem to me uh, to be what it should have been. But I know some of the other panelists want to. Thank you. Um, I agree absolutely with, with the general remarks. I, I would like to just add something from my own experience at Wyoming Catholic College, just because we're doing something um, more unique. Uh, we have a great books program with an outdoor program. And so I, I'm just mentioning this because one of our early ads said, um, basically, come here for the great books, the great outdoors, and the greatness of God. Um, and I, I mention that because <clears throat> it seems to me that um, the young people today, um, if they're serious about their faith, they, they actually have a hunger for some kind of greatness that our culture denies them. Um, and the liturgy, liturgical excellence, liturgical beauty are part of that greatness that we need to offer to them. They need to see the grandeur of God. They need to see the mystery and the sublimity of God um, through the music and the ceremonial and everything. And I, I, I've found students who come to our college, they never saw that in their parishes, um, but when they see it, they fall in love with it. They, they want to be in the choir, they want to serve mass. Um, and I, I really just think that, that pastors out there, in, in a sense, have, have not been courageous enough to recognize that the truth and, and, and what is beautiful will actually uh, strike a resonating chord. So 
if, if I could say anything, just be, please make sure uh, whatever you can do to offer these things to young people. Um, not everyone will respond, but some will respond, and will respond with, with great gusto. Peter and I are in very different educational settings. Uh, Peter is in a very Catholic college, and I teach at the world's oldest and largest Baptist university in Central Texas. <laughs> But I would still agree with the statements uh, that we have just heard. I have a lot of students I teach in a great text program, and I have a lot of Protestant students who read their way into the church. They, they fall in love with Augustine and Aquinas. They are astonished to learn that in between Jesus Christ and Billy Graham, something happened. <laughs> So it's great that they read their way into the church. That's because the church contains truth. But if it's only a cerebral movement, there is something missing. And where they really become Catholics is at the liturgy. When they see, when they see in a sense, dramatize the truths that they had read about, um, it makes a big difference. And the otherness of Catholic liturgy is actually a big draw for them. They're used to being pandered to. They're used to worship that is relevant, uh, that caters to their tastes. Uh, they've seen this done in many Protestant churches, and Protestants do this much better than Catholics do. What Catholics can present is the otherness um, of an experience, and, uh, and that really seals the deal for a lot of them.